When I was 12, we buried my dog, Prince, in the orange grove next to the house, near the, near the path where I had ridden my bicycle with him and him chasing along beside me. We took a shovel, dug a small grave for him there, and after a while went back to the house without him. The grief of death came into my world that day, giving me just a prelude of what would come again. Sooner or later, we all confront death. In our gospel lesson this morning, Mary, Martha, the disciples, Thomas in particular, the mourners, those who John calls the Jews in general, all give us particular perspectives on confronting death. Yet it is Jesus who shows us a new perspective. Each time we are challenged with death, we are met with what author Annie Dillard calls the incredible cost we pay just to live here. Each time we might react differently, struggling with the reality of death on our own terms. As we find Jesus coming to the tomb of Lazarus, we hear two simple yet powerful words. Jesus wept. He wept in grief because Lazarus had died. He also wept because he knew what life was about. Jesus appreciated his earthly life. He went to parties. He even provided the best wine one of the nights. He also knew that life was about something more than just the pleasure that we take in living. He showed us that something more and what it was. He called over and over again for us to love each other. He taught us to stand up to those with political and religious power who stood in the way of that community of care and inclusion. Over and again, he kept challenging the authorities in their secure way of life, insisting there was more to life than some protected and bound up shroud of existence. Jesus wept. He could have walked away with his grief, but he chose to stand firm, knowing well what it would cost. He could have walked away and avoided the tomb, but instead he walked up to it and challenged death. Not only the death of Lazarus, but also the death that you and I die each time that we walk away from an abundant life. As Jesus enters this story, it becomes a story about our daily dying and about a life that is free of all that binds us. The word that is used to describe what Jesus does next is lost in the phrase, a loud voice. He shouted, he let out a great cry. In other contexts, the word describes the scream of someone who is in great pain or an animal wounded in the forest. My guess is that anyone that wasn't dead at that moment was pretty much scared to death. A crying man screaming into a tomb at a lifeless body. It takes a lot to wake up the dead. It took Jesus everything he had as he stirred the dead. Jesus screamed loud enough to wake the dead. He screamed loud enough to stir us from our slumbering denial and anxiety, loud enough to call us out of the shadows of life and into the light. So hear the good news of the gospel. God calls us to an abundant life and everlasting life. We can hope and trust in such a life, even when confronting death. Amen.